welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us this morning. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship and opening prayer. 195. What if it were today?
God. As we sang a song like this, looking forward to the day that you do come and take us all home. I just pray, Lord, for the situation on this old earth. I pray for all the leaders of the countries that, Lord, somehow, some way, they might be touched. This country, all countries. I pray for this church, Father, for its fellowship, for its love, for Father, its ministering here in this area. I pray for your leadership in it. I pray, Lord, that you will watch over us, keep us strong. Lord, that you will be in charge of our lives. Bless each one that has come this morning. Be with those that couldn't come this morning, Father, for whatever reason. Let them know that they are in our hearts, in our prayers. Take charge. God direct us all. In my son's precious name we pray. Amen. Maybe see. Again, we do welcome all who are with us in the way of announcements on the opposite side of the morning worship. You will notice just a few things that are taking place in the coming week and also um, for the coming month of May for some of what's taking place. This morning after the morning worship, for those who can stay, we'll have a time of business, a business meeting that will be taking place. Next Sunday will be our Mother's Day banquet after the morning worship, and this involves all the men who would like to, as far as the cooking aspect um, and also the cleaning up and everything, so we will honor the mothers in that way. Uh, I know we don't have a list or anything, but I'm sure that uh, I know the last time we tried to make a list of food with the men, nobody really signed up and everybody just brought whatever they wanted, but now it works out fine as food with all that, so. Uh, so anyhow, so next Sunday we'll have our Mother's Day banquet with the men uh, cooking and also cleaning up and everything else and serving uh, as for as for honoring all the mothers next Sunday after the morning worship time. No evening worship next Sunday, um, 7th, uh, May 7th, uh, the, the first Thursday in May will be National Day of Prayer. Just remember the nation in prayer and at, uh, at the Griffith Park in Old Town across from, uh, the old, uh, across from the post office from basically 11.45 to uh, 1 o'clock there is a national day of prayer there that all invited to come as far as having involved with that. Uh, Mother's Day is May 10th, that's the second Sunday in May as to where it's been set aside to honor all mothers. Uh, for those who would like to help with Vacation Bible School this year, uh, June the 23rd through the 26th, that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. And this is from grades kindergarten through the sixth grade. All would like to help with, and we'll have that set aside for that time. Today we'll be collecting the last time for our Annie Armstrong offering. Uh, we've collected so far $144. And this is work being done in the U.S. I ask that you give over and above the working of the church, of Bayou Baptist Church. And as the Lord gives, put upon your heart to give to the working of mission work being done in the U.S. Uh, also, understand that we will have service tonight at 6 o'clock for all who would like to come tonight at 6 o'clock as we meet back in the kitchen area. And also Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday, 7 o'clock, we have Bible study and prayer time. Uh, also, and all are invited for uh, the coming of that as well. Any other announcements? The only other announcement I, I have and brought to my attention today is, and we've already sung it, but Johnny Garrett's birthday is today. Oh, it's going to sit there. <laughs> oh, it's going to sit there, Johnny. I wasn't supposed to say that, huh? Today's Johnny Garrett's birthday. So we wish Johnny Garrett a happy birthday today as today is his birthday, and, and of course we've already wished many others a happy birthday as well for the month of April as well. Today is officially his birthday. So happy birthday to John. Let us continue as we sing until the Lord is out, comes and leads us in our favor. Five hundred and seventy-three <coughs> set my soul afire.
What time do you go tomorrow morning? 8.30. 8.30. So remember, remember her in prayer where she's going to be going for that at Southern Surgical. Is Dr. Finger? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Dr. Finger on the thumb. <laughs> remember you in prayer. We should be. And also, um, Anthony will work some Yeah. Thank you. 
David, you're too young to be having back problems. David, can't be doing all that, Dave. Man. Is that what he was? <laughs> but just remember David in prayer. We show sure will. Yeah, so we'll, yeah. Others in prayer. Melton. Remember Sandy was over on Dallas? Yes. All right. I remember her as far as with all that, so yes, we sure will. Sandy, I, 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 unless my memory served me wrong, you got something coming up this Wednesday? Something happening this Wednesday? Thursday. Is it Thursday? See, I was told Wednesday. But anyhow. Yeah, I was told Wednesday, but I was told on Wednesday, but anyway. Thursday. How long have you been married to this man? Huh? <laughs> You definitely have to write books in you on how to do it, you know? <laughs> With the rest of the women around here, so yeah. So, congratulations to Melton and Sandy as they celebrate their 20 year uh, anniversary this coming uh, Thursday, but they're going to do it uh, Friday. So, remember them in prayer and pray for our Thanksgiving and schools with that. So, yes. Uh, Renee, I think she's in the back. So, remember her family uh, in Tennessee as well. She has numerous family members, mom, dad. Uh, and other family members as well um, with things that are going on as well with them. So remember them in prayer. Uh, Debbie Garrett's brother, Charles, he is not doing well. Uh, he needs a prayer uh, as for as prayer, lifting up him and his family in prayer. Remember uh, them in prayer concerning different things that are going on as for as with Charles. So remember them in prayer as well. Other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving. Anyway, just continue to remember each other in prayer, lift each other up in prayer. You know, we talked a little bit about it in Sunday school. You know, our nation is really going downhill over the years as far as with different things. And so remember each other in prayer and the course of our nation and pray for those in places of power and authority and pray for God's guidance and help and leadership. Traveling mercies for all who are traveling. Uh, even if it's just in and around the city of Slidell. We just pray for all who are traveling. For those who are not with us this morning, there are a few who are not here with us this morning. Pray for them and pray for God's guidance and leadership and help in their life. And remember them in prayer and pray for them. There are many in our midst that are going through difficulties and physical problems, work-related problems, or home-related problems. But just remember the many people in prayer and lift them up in prayer as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <coughs> Almighty God, we come before you this morning. We thank you for all of your blessings. Thank you for all that you are doing and have done in all of our lives. Thank you for each other. Thank you that we are able to meet in this building, in this place, that we can come together to worship, praise, and glorify you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. We do lift up in prayer the many, many prayer requests that have been mentioned during the Sunday School Hour, as well as this morning. We lift them all up before you, and we pray, we ask, and we beseech. We plead for your grace and your mercy and for your help in our lives. We pray for those that are struggling. We pray for those that are going through difficulties in their life, work or at home. We pray for those that are dealing with physical problems and ailments, many dealing with allergy related symptoms we lift them up before you and each and every one we pray for those in hospitals and nursing homes we ask for your help and for your guidance for those in our private homes that are dealing with difficulties Walden Langsford, Messiah Beasley and others Lord that are going through difficulties and at home be with them and help them and watch over them we lift up all the men and women in the military and their families continue to be with them and help them. Christian missionaries throughout the world that are proclaiming the gospel, be with them and help them. Area churches in our area, be with each and every church and the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, we especially pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ 
as their Lord and Savior. Men, women, boys and girls, friends we know, co-workers that we work with, or family members, Lord, and people we may come in contact with during the course of the week. We lift up so many who do not know Jesus Christ. And so we pray for salvation for so many in darkness. We pray you will open up hearts, ears, and eyes. And Lord, any that are here this morning that truly does not know you, I pray that you will open their hearts. I pray that you will call them with your holy calling. Be with each and every one of us. Lead us and guide us this morning. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Let us continue with Al and the leaders in our offertory hymn. Turning to him number 406, the solid rock, let's stand. <laughs>
to share with you a familiar song this morning from the from the Baptist hymn book. It's in the garden. <laughs> Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with, its, with their surging. There is a river whose stream make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She 
will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations all in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. And indeed, our God is ever present with us. We always have communication with him. We go to him in prayer all the time. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn, if you will, to John chapter 20, looking at verses 24 and 31. <clears throat> looking at Thomas, known as the song Doubting Thomas or Thomas the Doubter. But this morning I want us to look at him and, and with the words that Jesus so related to him, see my hands. Notice what has been said. As we pick it up in John chapter 20, verse 24 and following. Now Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe it. A week later. His disciples were in the house again, and this time Thomas was with him. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in his book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, that is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Not all the disciples, as we know, as we have read, with Jesus, when Jesus first appeared to the disciples after his resurrection from the dead, Thomas called Didymus was not there the first time. Thomas, you could say, was a pessimist. He is like unto, I guess you could say, ER in Winnie the Pool. You, you, everyone knows basically who ER is. As he sits there, he says, Oh, well, I guess that's the way it's going to be. I just don't know. He's got that very raw voice, you know, and he's got that look upon him, you know, that purple donkey, and he, and he just stares. A very pessimistic thing. Uh, uh, as far as in the Winnie the Pooh stories, he's a melancholy sort of a person with an uncanny knack of finding dark clouds in every silver lining. Um, ever met a person like that? Ever been familiar with people like that or know someone who is of that nature, say a VR, just of that nature? You know, you can, you can have the brightest, the most, the greatest thing of all, and they say, I don't know, I just don't know. You know, and they didn't have that knack about them. Well, Thomas here, you know, he just didn't believe them. They told him all that has happened, but yet he was a pessimist. Understand, though. Thomas loved the Lord Jesus. He loved him with all of his heart. And he was even willing, at one point, remember, he was even willing to lay down his life for the Lord. Thomas would always say, Lord, and he was the one that said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. <coughs> Show us the way. What is the way? He was the one. The Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Why was Thomas not present the first time? Don't know. No earthly idea. There have been many people who try to surmise many things. Let me put my conjecture and my two cents in there. I believe, coming from the human, human nature standpoint of it, I believe that Thomas was so torn by the death of Jesus Christ that at this point he was going to be by himself for a period of time. Just like when death comes to someone we love, someone so close to us, we just want to be, be by ourselves for a period of time and dwell upon that probably. And I think this is where, where we have here with Thomas. I don't think any other conjecture is worth putting on it. However, when he returned, the other disciples told him that Jesus and what had taken place. But 
Thomas would have none of it. Ah, oh, no. They were all hallucinating. They were all out of their minds. They didn't, they didn't know what they were talking about. This was not. They didn't believe any of them. Again, why? What, what is it that Thomas didn't believe? He did not believe the report of the other, from the other disciples that indeed Jesus Christ was alive. <coughs> that Jesus Christ had visited them and was shown to them as well. Now, before you put anything against Thomas, how often do we refuse to believe things that have happened or insist that God prove himself? How many times have you read in your book and said, you know, I just don't know if that really happened. I just can't believe. I read here somewhere where, you know, these Egyptians, where, where the people of Israel was was surrounded by these Egyptians, and all of a sudden, this wall, this, this Red Sea, it opened up, and they walked upon the dragon. I don't know. I just can't believe if that's true or not. They had this man in here. He was thrown into this lion's den with these ferocious lions. And you know, they didn't even touch him. I don't know about this. You know, how many times have people, have you, have people, somebody maybe told you something, you say, I just don't know if that's true or not. Refuse to believe, even when told by people who have seen, and yet still don't believe. Understand that what we have written in God's Word was written by people who have seen it. This really happened. This really took place. But yet we have people who refuse to believe it. Thomas said such a thing as, and he became known as the Doubter, or to many, Doubting Thomas. Now, the question comes is, why did Thomas doubt? Why? Was it because of guilt that he himself placed upon himself? Because he himself deserted Jesus at the time when Jesus needed someone? Remember, they all fled when Jesus was arrested. And nobody came to him. Was it out of sorrow and a loss of a friend who he loved so dearly? Was it maybe human nature? Again, all of us, human nature wise, it's like someone coming to you and saying, you know, so and so died the other day, went to his funeral. There he was in the coffin, placed him there and everything. And you know, he's alive again. He was risen from the dead. Oh, no. No, oh, that was impossible. Impossible. This is basically, I think, the mentality of Thomas. As the other disciple said, we have seen Jesus. Oh, no, you, you're mistaken. I was there. At the cross. I saw him on the cross. I saw him when they took him down. He wasn't breathing. And then he put that big old stone in front of the tomb. And he was in there. No, you, you don't know what you're talking about. He didn't want to have any of what the disciples told him concerning what has taken place. A week later, after Jesus had already revealed himself to his disciples, he comes again to his disciples. And this time, Thomas is there with him. Now usually, when somebody's there, you, know, you, you have the evidence that's going with everything. Have you ever gone on vacation? When you go on vacation, what do you usually bring back with you? Souvenirs. Everybody brings back souvenirs when they go on vacation. I don't care where they go at. One souvenir, two souvenirs. My wife usually brings three back three, three or four or five things of souvenirs. And usually they're plants. She always has this thing about plants. And she brings them back. We go to Gatlinburg, and half the van is, and most of it's with plants, and we go to this place called Pottery World, and she fills half the van up with all kinds of stuff from there. Souvenir, well, I bring my shit back too, so I'm gonna get my shots in there too. I bring some things back, but not as much, but, but we all bring back different things from places we go. When Jesus came to earth as God-man, as God who came in the flesh. He died on a cross. You know what he brought back when he went to heaven? He brought back, he, he brought back to heaven a souvenir. 
with nail print hands, the scars in his hands, his feet, and his side. He brought back with him. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6, as John is shown by God things in heaven, in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6, here's what John saw when he looked into heaven. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the circle, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by four living creatures and the elders. This lamb that John had saw was indeed the Christ, the Messiah, Jesus, looking as if it had been slain. What he's, who John saw there as he was given his vision in heaven was indeed this Jesus, this same Jesus, looking as if it had been slain. I believe, again, he looked upon the Jesus. Who? And he saw him who was na with nail prints in his hands and his feet. And there, his side was also pierced as well. There are a, quite a few things that we can look at from John chapter 20 and take to heart. But today, I want us to look at the nail-scarred hands. As Jesus tells Thomas, see my hands. Behold my hands. Look upon my hands and believe. The evidence of who he was. First of all, notice that the nail-scarred hands are evidence of passion. At the evidence of passion. Thomas looked upon the scars, upon the nails, scarred hand of Jesus, and what he found was comfort. He no longer doubted, but now he truly believes. But the scars also tell us that the scars represent the suffering that Jesus went through. His pain was real. It reveals how much God loves us by looking at the nail-scarred hands of Jesus and that he was sent by God not only to die on the cross but also to suffer for our sins. Nail-scarred hands represent the suffering that Jesus went through. The Lord met Thomas at the point of his weakness and his doubt. Without rebuke, notice he doesn't rebuke Thomas at all here. Instead, he comes to Thomas and he says, Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Look upon my hands, Thomas. See for yourself. Out of love he comes to Thomas. Thomas, here we see he saw the hands of Jesus and he did what? He believed. He saw the hands of Jesus and he proclaimed, My Lord and my God. Now this is not just a saying, you know, some people say, Oh my God. He was proclaiming here that indeed this Jesus was indeed not only Lord, the Messiah, but he was also God who came in the flesh as was mentioned from John chapter 1. He realizes this Lord, this Jesus, is indeed God who came in the flesh and who died for my sins. As he's making this proclamation, we don't even know if Thomas ever reached out and touched the hands of Jesus. We don't know if he ever put his finger in the side of Jesus. Never, we're never told this. All we're told is that he proclaimed Jesus as Lord and as God. I don't think he ever did. I think that he gazed upon and looked at the hands of Jesus, the side of Jesus, and that was enough. He didn't need to do anything else. And he knew. Once there was a lady who was going to have surgery, so she was in the hospital. 
a hospital priest came and to see her. And after a little while, he asked her, Are there any sins in your life that you need to confess to me? She very politely replied, Let me see your hands. The priest, he held out his hands, and after she carefully examined them, she stated, I'm sorry, you can't forgive sins. The only one who can forgive me of my sins has nail prints in his hands. And that is so true. He is the only one. Thomas looked at the nail prints' hands and believed. Again, we don't see where he actually put his finger there or he touched. All it says was he beheld and he looked upon the nail print hands of Jesus and he believed. He believed because it was enough for him. Secondly, the nail scored hands or confidence of pity. It is that of pity that we find here. Notice, Thomas knew after observing and after looking at the hands of Jesus, his feet, and also his side, he knew that this was the same Jesus. It was not someone different. This was the same one that he walked with for many years. This was the same one he saw the miracles that he had displayed over the years. This was the same Jesus who raised Lazarus from the dead. This was the same Jesus. He said, Lord, we don't know the way. How can we know where you're going? This was the same Jesus whom he saw on the cross dying for his sins. Not somebody else, but the same one. Understand, as we see the evidence of the pity is that Jesus knows what physical pain we go through here on earth. Jesus knows what it means to have a broken heart. In the book of Hebrews, God's word declares that we have a high priest that knows all that we go through. He knows all of our suffering. He knows all of our pain because he himself went through pain, suffering, and he even knows the temptation because he himself was tempted in every way, shape, and form. He knows the things that are going on. We have a God, we have a Lord, we have a high priest who knows our situation. Even today, in the 21st century, he knows what we're going through. You see, those souvenirs that Jesus went back to heaven with, the scars, was there. And it's there to un so that we can understand that He understands our pain, our suffering. He knows what we're going through. He knows what's taking place. It tells us again in Hebrews chapter 2, in verse 14 and following, in here, backs up what it said. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by fear of death. For surely it is not the angels he helped, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like his brothers in every way in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, that he might make an atonement for the sins of the people because he himself suffered when he was tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted. Now, if you notice in here, it says, it's surely not the angels he helped, but Abraham's descendants. Now, who are Abraham's descendants that he helps. It's all who truly profess faith in Jesus Christ are Abraham's descendants. It's not just descendants of Abraham who were from the line of the lineage of Abraham, but for every person that truly believes in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are descendants of Abraham in the truest sense. So he's here to help us. And he knows what we're going through. He knows all about our pain, our suffering, our sorrow. And when Thomas looked upon Jesus, 
What did he see? He saw the suffering servant. He saw the same Jesus who was there on the cross, suffering for his sins. He saw the same Jesus who was tempted in every way, shape, and form. He saw the same Jesus who knows all about our trouble, knows about all that we go through. He saw the evidence of it. And then the third thing we see from here, here as he tells Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands, the nail scarred hands or evidence, or an evidence or experience with which to prove. Jesus proved who he was by his nail scarred hands. The evidence was there. Again, why? Did Thomas so declare, why did Thomas look at Jesus and say, my Lord and my God? Why did, in fact, he believe without even touching the scars, the nail-scarred hands, was evidence of it. They were the marks that he identified this Jesus with. This was the same Jesus. If Melton was to tell you, I had a pacemaker put in. Looking at Melton, you couldn't tell he's had a pacemaker in. Or even now. But the evidence is there. If he removes his shirt, it shows you the evidence of it. Or say a person has had open heart surgery. Just by looking at the person, you cannot tell what that person was. But if that person reveals his chest, you can see the long scar that was made from the open heart surgery because it's there for the rest of their life. It doesn't go away. The evidence is there. And the same thing here. When Thomas looked upon Jesus and the marks on his hands, what was revealed to him and what was shown to him is that this was indeed the same Jesus. The evidence was there. The proof was there. There was no way that he could doubt it. There was no way that he could say, this isn't it. Because the evidence was there to prove it. There was no way to conceal it at all. The wounds and the marks proved that this was Jesus Christ who was crucified on the cross. When you and I, when we tell people about Jesus Christ, what do we tell them about Jesus? We tell them that he died on the cross some 2,000 years ago for our sins. The evidence of that is the marks in his hands, his feet, in his side. Again, when John looked up in heaven and was given a glimpse of him who was in the uh, who, who was there, he said, I saw the lamb as though he was slain. Again, I truly believed he saw the crucified Lord with the evidence that indeed it was he. Thomas believed him as Lord and God. Not a man made God, but God who came on earth and died on a cross for our sin. This Jesus was indeed God who was crucified, dead, buried, and the third day he rose again as the other disciples had said. He believed because he saw the evidence that was before him. There was no denying what was shown. Once there was a small orphan boy who lived with his grandmother. One night, unfortunately, the house caught fire. The elderly grandmother, attempting to rescue the little boy, she perished in the smoke and the flames. As the house was burning, a large crowd was around the house, and everyone heard the sound of a boy crying for help, but no one seemed to know what to do because everything was engulfed in fire. When suddenly a stranger, he rushes to the back of the house, and there he spotted an iron pipe that went up to the second story. And so what he did was he climbed up that iron pipe to the second story, picked up the boy, then to the window, he, everybody saw what he had done. He put the boy around his neck and he climbed down that iron pipe again. 
and rescued the boy. Such an heroic thing. Well, unfortunately, the boy became an orphan because he had no other family members. So the council, very sympathetic of knowing that the lad needed someone to raise him, had a town meeting of who and what was going to happen to the boy. Well, one man, he gets up and he says, I own a farm. And we know a young man, he needs to have a lot of outdoors to play around and romp and everything else. Well, another one, he was, he, he was a teacher. He says, I have a huge library. And, we give the, and I would give the boy a good education. Another one spoke up and he says, I'm a very wealthy man. And I can give this boy not only a farm, but I can also give him an education and much more. I can give him all the things that he needed. Well, finally, after all those eager people spoke, the chairman of the meeting asked, is there anyone else? Is there anyone who would like to say a word before we make a decision of who will raise this boy? Well, from the back seat, there rose a stranger. He slipped into the room without even being noticed. Slowly, he walks to the front where the little boy was. Reaching the front of the room, he stood in directly in front of the boy. Slowly, the stranger removed his hands from his pockets. A gasp came from the crowd. The little boy, who has not looked basically at anyone, focused at the young man after many times just focusing down, downcasted, and he looked up. What did he see? He saw the man's hands were terribly scarred. The little boy suddenly ran out with a cry of recognition. Before him stood the man who saved his life. And he noticed it how? By the scars on his hands. He knew that this was the same man who went up to the pipe and rescued him and brought him down. And so, with great joy, the boy threw himself around the stranger's neck and held on for dear life. The other people, they all walked out quietly and quickly. For you see, the boy, they knew that this was the one to whom he was to stay with. The nail scarred hand, the more hands were effective, but more effective than even words. The man didn't say a word. I believe this is what it will be like as well. I believe this is just me. As Fanny Gay calls me, and so written in her song, I saved you first of all, when I crossed the swelling tide, and there I stand before him, I will know him. And how will I know him? I will know him by the prince in his hands. I believe the same thing. I have never seen the face of Jesus. Oh, there are many pictures that people have given that. I have no idea if that's what Jesus really looks like or not. But I will know him by the prince in his hands. I believe that when we stand before him, we will see the nail scarred hands of Jesus. Why? Because it will be proof, evidence, that indeed Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Do I need that proof of evidence? Absolutely not. But I believe that we'll see him and we'll know him and understand what here Jesus so says concerning when he told to Thomas that as Thomas believed, but also notice he says, because you have seen me, you have believed, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. We fall in that category for those of us here who truly believe in Jesus Christ. Understand, Jesus died for our sins. The evidence of it, true, is his hands. But you know whatever evidence we have? The Word of God. The Word of God tells us what took place there many years ago. And the word of God is true. It tells us, this Jesus whom Thomas looked at and said, my Lord, my God, is the same.
same one who died for our sins. This Jesus is the same one who rose. This Jesus is the same one who stands and sits at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. This same Jesus is the same one that we will stand before one day and give an account of all that we have done. And more importantly, we will stand before him. And will he say to you, come in, or will he say, I do not know you? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior today? Let us stand. Almighty God will come before you. We thank you for all that you have revealed to us. And if there's anyone here this morning whom you have spoken to, revealed yourself to, and are saying to them, just believe, I pray they will come unto you. And just because you have said so, they will believe in you and receive you as Lord and Savior of their life. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to hymn number 295. 295. Near to the heart of God. God is speaking to you today to come as we sing all three standards.